What is up everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I won't be doing a what's in my camera bag. Instead, I will be doing a what's in my pockets from a smartphone filmmaker's perspective. So let's get into it. When filming with a smartphone, I like to keep it as simple as possible and only bring the necessary tools I need when shooting. Now I have four pockets. You could say that would be cheating, but these multi-pocket pants are my favorite because they are also so convenient feel comfortable and also look great. It's so much quicker to grab items from your pocket and makes the setup process much easier. The great thing about creating mobile content is that you generally don't need much. When I go out and shoot with the Sony a7S III, I most of the time bring a camera bag with me since it obviously doesn't fit into my pockets. By the way, I will leave links to the product in the video description below. Anyway, let's now dive into the what's in my pocket for 2021, starting with the camera I use. Can you guess what camera I'm using? Boom! It's the iPhone 12 Pro Max. What I really like about this is that I'm able to record in 4K 60 frames per second in 10-bit HDR and Dolby Vision. Being able to shoot this format creates an overall higher image quality and provides more option when editing in post-production. I like the improved wide-angle lens with the aperture of 1.6 that creates a stronger separation between the subject and the background and having a shallower depth of field makes the video just look more cinematic. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is also larger and a bit heavier compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which makes it better to see what I'm recording and adds more stability when shooting handheld. The great thing about using a smartphone to shoot videos, I say that every time, is that it's an all-in-one system, which leads me to the apps I'm using on my phone. I use Filmic Pro for most of my video shoots since it gives me full control over my camera. The standard camera app is great, but in some situations, Filmic Pro is more suitable since it unlocks DSLR-like features. I'm able to control the focus and exposure separately, dial in my white balance, set my shutter speed, and much more. So if you create mobile content professionally, then having this app will help you in many situations. The app is available for iOS and Android users. It doesn't come for free and cost $14.99, I think. Uh, there is also an available in-app purchase for $13.99. Uh, that will unlock different picture profiles such as log for better dynamic range. So all in all, it would cost you $30, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it since it really expands the functionality of your camera for better video results. But what is video without editing? The number one question I get is what editing app do I use? I personally like to use LumaFusion to edit my videos on the go. Before it was InShot, but I find that InShot doesn't offer as much functionality as LumaFusion. It's great for creating simple edits and to quickly upload videos on social media like your Instagram stories, but for more complex edits, LumaFusion has become my go-to mobile editing app. I haven't used it that often, but after looking at the reviews and testing it out for myself, it quickly became obvious to me that this editing application was powerful enough to fulfill my editing needs. It does take time editing on a smaller screen. That is why I prefer cutting my videos in Final Cut Pro. The app is fairly inexpensive. For a one-time payment of $20, you get full access to all of its great features. The interface is intuitive, and if you have experience with editing, this editing app doesn't take much time to learn. In the near future, I will be dropping more tutorials on how to edit your videos with Luma fusion so stay tuned for that so next is the light chaser pro i got the director's kit which comes with a protective case a grip a bluetooth shutter a mist and variable nd filter the lens i have on right now is actually the mist filter that also cuts down light so it, it's actually also an nd filter and that is what i use most often so the reason why i need to cut down light is to set my shutter speed to cinematic levels sounds great, right? This way I can achieve that natural motion blur you see in Hollywood movies. <whistles> what I like about this case is that I can leave the filter on and take it out to quickly capture moments. The grip I have adds more stability, which makes my videos look smoother when shooting handheld. The Light Chaser Pro is expensive and comes at around $250, but the glass quality you get is the best. And with this minimalistic setup, I'm able to turn my iPhone into a professional camera. If you want to know more about the Light Chaser Pro, you can check out the link up here. Next is a microfiber cloth to wipe down my tears. 
for 30,000 subscribers. Now I carry this with me all the time because before I start shooting, I cleaned the lens first. This simple task can already improve the image quality of your video. Next on the list is the DJI OM4. This is by far my favorite gimbal. Whenever I shoot mobile content, this gimbal goes with me. Now this has a magnetic system and allows me to easily attach my iPhone onto the gimbal so that I can shoot right away. So if for some reason I decide to use the gimbal, I can easily detach the grip and mount the magnetic clamp onto the case or can just leave it on. And then I can simply attach it to the OM4 and I am ready to shoot. And it works really great with the Light Chaser Pro, as you can see. And like I said, I can also just leave the clamp on since it doesn't disturb my shooting when shooting handheld. Now, what's also useful is the tripod leg of the DJI OM4, which actually allows me to mount it onto this grip right here. So I'm just gonna demonstrate this for you. So if I decided just to have a static shot, I can just easily use this one as a tripod so that's pretty cool and this can be useful for shooting time lapses for example i also got the ring clamp for 15 dollars including a mini magic arm for 12 dollars that allows me to attach different accessories now i actually made a video about that setup if you want to check that out i will leave a link up here so if you're wondering the dji is priced at around 169 dollars so if you need a quick setup and want to achieve smooth looking footage the DJI OM4 is a great solution. Next on the list is the Ulanzi VL49 Pocket LED Light. It's important to carry at least one video light with you in case you have to film in a dull environment. Smartphones generally don't do well in low light situations and increasing the ISO will usually result in a noisy image. Now here's an example where I filmed at home using uh, two of these LED lights versus without. As you can see, it does make a big difference when shooting in a low lit environment. The pocket LED light is really small and rechargeable that produces a nice soft light. The intensity can be controlled on the back and I can even change colors if I want to. It comes with three cold shoe mounts in which I'm able to attach different accessories which leads me to using the Siren T-Mica Dual. So I'm going to attach this right here and I can simply attach the Siren T dual mic right here and connect it to the phone. So the internal mic on the iPhone 12 Pro Max actually produces decent audio quality. But if you want to get the best audio quality possible, investing in an external microphone will get you better audio quality. Now, like I said, this is the Siren T dual mic, which is a directional shotgun mic that works best when pointing it at the sound source. What I like about this mic is that I'm able to switch between capturing audio from one head or two heads, which makes it great for vlogging. It's compatible with smart smartphones and DSLR cameras and there's no battery required. Now since it has a 3.5 millimeter plug I got the lighting adapter to make it work with the iPhone. The mic is priced at around $60 which in my opinion isn't that expensive. The audio quality is actually very good. So this is how it sounds like with the dual mic attached. The audio should probably be better than the internal mic on my iPhone. So this is how it sounds like with the internal mic on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Let me know what you think. Now, in case it's windy outside, you can actually attach windshields onto the microphone. For me, a convenient mic and a great solution for capturing great audio quality. The great thing about having a setup like this is that I can mount it in different ways to fit my shooting needs. So if I wanna go handheld, I can simply go like this, right? Or if I want to use the gimbal, I can simply detach this one very easily and mount it on to my gimbal and I'm ready to shoot with it. And you can even use the vlogging setup, which uh, just includes the ring clamp, which I haven't brought with me. And you can easily use the light and the microphone as well. For me, this setup offers a lot of versatility and is a minimalistic solution to capturing daily mobile content. Let me know in the comments what you think about this setup. And also let me know what you carry with you in your pockets as a mobile filmmaker. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. This way I can keep creating awesome content 
content for you guys. Remember to download my free smartphone filmmaking guide that will help you get started creating high quality videos with your phone. If you want to see more videos about mobile filmmaking, here are two videos I highly recommend watching. Thank you so much for being part of this channel. Have a great day and see you in the next video.